back with Elaine Hall, Hall, the founder and executive artistic director of The Miracle Project, uh, mother of a non-speaking autistic son, and a pioneer in the use of inclusive theater and film to bring out the often unheard voices of individuals with autism and all abilities. Hi, okay. Elaine. Amen Hi. to that. Hi. You are the queen of that. Uh, amazing. And we want to start by talking about you guys have a new show at The Miracle Project that's opening in just a couple of weeks. Tell us what the show is and all the details. So our new show is opening on May 31st at the Wallace Annenberg Center for the Performing Arts in Beverly Hills. Okay. And the title is 185 Wilshire, A Love Story. And tell us what it's about. 185 Wilshire, A Love Story is about young people with autism looking for love. Okay. And so interesting. I was just I had a text the other day from a young man with Asperger's talking about how difficult this dating thing is. That's exactly what we, we tackle. And the mm -hmm. show, we started in September with just an idea that we wanted to do something about love and trust and independence. Mm -hmm. And we had the students improvise who they really were and what they were feeling about those topics. Then we took all their thoughts and ideas and expressions and feelings and created this original musical mm -hmm. which is lovely. that really shares their truth, which is exactly, I mean, the world of dating, I mean, when you think about it, it it's kind of fake and false, the, yes. the typical world, like there's, right. there's rules and there's games that you play and there's books to read. And what our um, protagonist discovers is that it's really about self-love first. It's about accepting and appreciating who we are and then finding someone mm -hmm. who sees us for mm -hmm. who we are. Mm -hmm. And so we go through um, the, uh, it, it's Dominique Brown, who you've had on your show yes. before. So we go through his journey as um, a young man with Asperger, with autism, right. and um, his mom and dad and sister. So we have a whole sibling thing going. Okay. We have mom and dad needing to let go but wanting to hold on right. all the things that we experience yes. as moms yes. Yes. and um, the realization that um, for the the young adult that um, he will always be somewhat dependent mm -hmm. but how does he find that independence within mm -hmm. that that interdependence Love it. so we explore that and um, finding love first in all the wrong places mm -hmm and having his new friends teach him about dating and it's all wrong and he messes up. So there's all kinds of real life situations just like the young right. man was talking about. That, right. you know, and then really realizing that who do I feel the most comfortable with? Mm -hmm. Who do I feel the most connected with? And that can go from there into, oh, maybe this is a person I should be dating. Love it. And Fashion. you're having a gala. Right, we're having a gala. It's <laughs> so exciting! Um, our gala is on May thirty first, and we are honoring just some phenomenal individuals who have been incredible supporters of the Miracle Project. First, Julie Weil and Beth Tischler, who are um, were our past co presidents mm -hmm. of the Miracle Project and Project Miracle and our foundation, and they helped us be where we are today. They really set us up as a, a strong organization, able to take funds and really be able to be of service to the community. And that's Julie and Beth. And then we're honoring Sasha Alpert. Mm -hmm. She is a producer uh, at, at Buna Murray Productions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was her um, vision that uh, was able to um, produce Autism the Musical and okay. get it to where it is and Buddha wow. Murray in their editing process and sell Autism the Musical uh, for, for two seasons to HBO. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So we want to honor her because that right, really... That was the beginning of so much for you. It was the beginning. And then Gail Williamson, who is a talent agent. Yeah. Uh -huh. And she's representing a number of our kids. That's and great. A, she's just been so phenomenal in the disability world. So. Right, right. Well, that kind of dovetails into... Uh, it's been a very exciting year um, in the autism world, and uh, and especially in terms of Hollywood and actors on the spectrum being hired, and you've been a big part of that. 
Uh, we had had you on the show before to talk about the movie Please Stand By. Yes. And that you were on set coaching, and there were several actors from the Miracle Project there. But there, there, there's been more that's been happening with that. You guys were just at Ot Fest. And there's season two of Atypical coming out, and there's so much to talk about there. So how have you been involved? How ha have some of the students from Miracle Project been involved with all that? So, Shannon, it's been incredibly exciting. And, it is. Um, you know, April Autism Awareness Month, we, we just returned from the United Nations, mm -hmm. where um, uh, I moderated a panel on um, exactly what you're saying, the, the media and autism. And... Um, this year's theme at the UN was women and autism, and it was just phenomenal. And um, part of the panel were two students from the Miracle Project. Yes, who were they? Uh, Brittany Sanders uh -huh. and Dominique Brown. Okay. And so individuals with autism who were on in, in the film, uh, Please Stand By. So mm -hmm. that was incredible. And then a number of our young people are getting work in mm -hmm. the business, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, Kobe, who you know, was was on the Good Doctor. Yes, Kobe and Bird. Kobe Bird. Kobe Bird. And then I've been so blessed to be um, coaching on the set of Atypical. Okay. So, <coughs> pardon me. Um, and that has been really extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for people um, who haven't watched, there is season one that's available right now on Netflix okay. for Atypical. It does deal with some very mature topics, so mm -hmm. people have to be mindful about which kids that they want to watch because the main character is a teenage boy who has decided that he would like to have a, a relationship <laughs> that would involve uh, sexual things, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, various and sundry sexual things, right. uh, the full gamut. And that's, that's a very touchy subject, but I am so proud that it is being covered in a, in a format in which our kids can see it. I, I think it's amazing. We've had Rabia Rashid on the show, the amazing creator. I also love how the story tells what the siblings' point of view yeah. is, what a great thing. And... You know, I am thrilled. Last year they had Anthony Hawkins on the show, who is an actor who's on the autism spectrum. And it seems like in season two they decided not to double down, but to like quadruple down. So talk to us about who's going to be in season two. Okay, well, so I have to be a little bit... Um, oh, do we have to be... A, just a little so, bit, but because okay. I, I can't wait to come back on right okay. before the season begins. Okay. Do we know when that is? More. So I'm not sure. It'll be okay. sometime uh, either late August or in the fall. Okay. But what I am uh, privileged to say is that um, Atypical Season 2 will have a whole group of young adults with autism. Oh, wow. uh, t high school kids with right. autism. Okay. And that are peer uh, friends with um, with Sam and I love the show I love the show from the beginning and after working on the set I love it even more yeah. because uh, Rabia uh, Mary all the producers from the top down they walk their talk mm -hmm. they are just phenomenal human beings with um, such uh, integrity mm -hmm. and desire to um, uh, present authenticity um, Casey Wilson, who you know from Saturday Night Live, mm -hmm. is uh, uh, is on the show and uh, plays plays a, a, a peer group um, facilitator. And she actually came to the Miracle Project last night. Oh, oh interesting! Oh, That's wow. great. And That's did improv thing. with our students oh, and um, gave feedback for, for one eight five Wilshire a love story. So she's just um, an amazing human being. And every single person. From the AD to the PA to the craft service to every single person, they're just wonderful people, and I want everyone to catch up on season one. Yes. So you'll be ready for season two. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Very typical. And and we uh, just at, we were all at the Ot Fest because uh, yes. Please Stand By was there, and also the cast of Atypical was there. So. Uh, you know, we were, uh, were on the red carpet with Kobe Bird interviewing people, and there were several people that he was interviewing young actors who were saying that they were part of the peer group. So while maybe we can't tell you, you can go and look at our coverage of that. What was amazing to me is that I think a lot of people in the autism community have gotten so used to what the, the norm was that they were watching Kobe interview a young actress 
who is in that peer group and they wrote in and they said people with autism should be doing this you should have hired people <laughs> with autism to do this and then everybody wrote back and said pay attention both of these people are and it was wow. such a watershed moment for right, us right. we were like yeah no that's wow. that's exactly what you're watching uh, so we're, we're gonna have to change some of our defaults uh, that I think the autism community is used to going why isn't it? Oh, it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. <laughs> that's so phenomenal. Isn't that amazing? Well, that I mean, that's really what what we're committed to at the Miracle Project is really changing perceptions. And I mean, Kobe, when he started, was very shy and very reserved, and and um, he's grown and blossomed through through um, through theater, through music, yeah. mm -hmm. and um, so many of our students. And that I think that's something that. I've been very um, involved in uh, the disability awareness in, in Hollywood, and, mm -hmm. and um, what people don't realize is that all our uh, our young people with autism need is um, is a chance yeah. and training. Now, I, this is something that's really important, and I'm not trying to plug us, but uh, you know, training anywhere really, because many programs, uh, typical programs, don't understand the uh, processing mm -hmm. um, differences that our friends with autism have. Mm -hmm. And so they may not do well in a traditional acting class or singing class right. or movement class. And so what we're able to provide is um, really tuning into who that person is so that they can evolve to who they are intrinsically and allow them to blossom. And I think any any program that, that, um, that is able to bring that out you'll see more and more and more actors with autism. Absolutely. In, you know, interviewing on red carpets and mm -hmm. having lead roles in shows. And there's more happening. It's incredibly exciting. And... Uh, but you are really at the forefront of this, Elaine. You have been at the forefront of this, and it's, it must be nice that you're seeing not only your vision of, of this come to fruition, but to ha see the progression of these kids and how much progress they make. We know now that your program is evidence-based, yes. that there is science behind it that shows that kids do make progress, so much so that you now have a social skills program. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I'm cr incredibly excited because we are now vendored through uh, the regional center, mm -hmm. which means that um, we uh, students can come to our classes mm -hmm. and our social skills classes and build communication skills, socialization, life skills, job skills, and the state will support that. Yeah. And it's it's a game changer for us because mm -hmm. we're able to reach more and more uh, people. We have a class for non-speaking and minimally fluent uh, um, adolescents with autism. Mm -hmm. We have a new class starting on Sundays because I know a lot of our kids don't have things to do on Sundays. Right. So it'll be a social skills class on Sundays. And then we have our adult improv for interaction class that is now vendored through Regional Center. So we are uh, we are incredibly excited to be Where able to- Where can people to, go to find out information about all this? They can go to themiracleproject.org. Okay. And find out information and they can email Ryan at themiracleproject.org. Okay. okay. And that will be able to, to provide that. Excellent. And just to clarify, in these social skills classes, are they doing, um, you know, we have this expectation of what social skills is, but you're putting it more in the, the realm of improv and theater. Is that correct? Thank you, Shannon. That's what makes the Miracle Project social skills so different, yeah. is that it's not about walk into a room and say hello. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. Our classes are integrated with, with um, all abilities, neurotypical um, and individuals with, with disabilities. So the peer role models mentor social skills. And we have the neurotypicals enter our world. Right. So then the neurotypicals gain understanding and compassion and curiosity and uh, um, friends with those with and without autism. Yeah. And um, it's fun. I mean, we have kids that just talk about it all week long, and that's their favorite day of the week right. because we use movement and music and theater games and jokes, and we play around with when you're being annoying and when you're not being annoying, and it, but they're in charge. So it's a, a real joyous way mm -hmm. and natural way mm -hmm. to learn social skills mm -hmm. and job, job interview skills and work skills. 
So all of those things are, are what we're doing okay. in a creative way, in a fun, creative way. It's very exciting. It's so yeah. important what you're doing. So again, miracleproject.org. Yes, the, the, the miracle. miracleproject.org. And they can find out more about 185 Wilshire Love Story there as well? Absolutely. Okay. We've actually sold out okay. for sold the out? gala. Great. For the and gala, for you the sold gala, out. We sold out the gala, which nice. is a first and incredibly exciting. Yeah. Um, Julia Moss, who you had on your show, yeah. has just been doing a brilliant work, and um, we're very excited. And I know because we have such wonderful um, honorees. And, mm -hmm. uh, so, But we do still have tickets for June 1st and June 2nd and June 3rd. Okay. And I do want to say that on June 3rd, oh, there's our, our uh, sign. Um, <gasps> On June 3rd, um, which is a Sunday, we do have a sensory friendly performance, which means that the lights will be dimmed and um, uh, the, the um, theater will be open for people to walk in and out. So if your child's uh, first experience will be uh, coming to a theater, the Wallace is very open and um, yeah, we still have spaces on June 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Okay. okay. And just one last thing to say about the Wallace. Uh, what an amazing place. Oh. They do amazing things there, and it is so lovely that you have found a home there. I can't think of anything that makes more sense in the world. I, I Every time I go there, I think about how fabulous it is that they recognized what you were doing yes. and said, come and be here. Uh, I just want to say thank you to them always. Really important that they can people can come and see your shows there, but they have a whole host of amazing things that happen at the Wallace. They do. The Wallace has become our artistic home and the support that we get from that community. And for our students to be walking into this beautiful space where they're not included, they belong. Right. They're a part of the Wallace family. and. Uh, Mark Slavkin, I, I just um, pinch myself that we're working with him and Heather Cooney, and it's the Wallace has been an incredible place to be. It's fabulous. Well, congratulations on all of these amazing Thank accomplishments, Coachy. Thank you. Thanks so for coming much. by and talking with us today. Always a joy.